Hello and welcome to this episode of Scrapneak TV. Today I'm going to be talking about blending a black and white photo into your layout um, using Photoshop Elements. So um, I'm starting off. I've got a photo here that I um, that was taken a few years ago at Disneyland, and I'm going to use this white background here to blend it into. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to the photo and I'm going to File, Duplicate, click OK. And this way, um, I've got two photos. As you can see, my one up here is still there. And then the one down here that we see right here is the new one that we duplicated. So this is the one we're going to turn black and white because we want to leave the other one the way that it is. And I also want to make this one bigger. When blending in a photo, we don't really need to worry about maintaining a lot of the quality of the photo. And so um, it kind of even works better being a little bigger and then we have more room that we can work with with that. So I'm going to do image, resize. And again, I don't recommend doing this method um, at any other time. <laughs> but so I'm going to change the resolution to 300, and that puts it up to about 2,500. So we're just going to bump that to 3,000. OK, and click OK. And then I'm going to kind of zoom out. Let's see. Um. There we go. So let's just zoom in, zoom out a bit so that it's a little more manageable. Okay, now we're going to turn it black and white. Um, again, super easy to do. We're not worrying about it being um, a really good black and white necessarily because we are going to be blending it into a paper. So we're just going to go up to. Um, Image, and let's see, grace mode and then grayscale. There we go. So super simple, just a standard black and white photo. Okay, now we're going to come over to our photo bin. And as you can see, we've got our black and white photo and we've got our color photo. And we're going to double click on the white and then we're just going to slide this black and white onto the page. Okay, now when we hit the little um, magnifying glass up here, it comes back so we can zoom just a little bit so I want to be able to see. Um, no, we don't want to fill screen. Ah, okay. There we go. Fit screen. This way we can see all the way around it. Um, now we're going to move this a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do is use our blend modes. So if we come over here on normal, we've got all of these different um, modes that we can use, like soft light, overlay, I think overlay works a little bit better. We can do multiply, but that doesn't really change it a whole lot. Color burn, oh, I think that gives it a really cool look. Um, so I think we're going to actually stick with that one. I like the way that it lets a lot of that texture through. And then we're going to just change the opacity a bit. So we're just kind of doing this as a little bit of an effect, not necessarily um, as our main, because we'll still have our picture. So I'm going to move this as much as I can without losing people from it. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this into the back so that it looks like it naturally goes from white into the photo. To do that, I need to make sure that, let's see, it doesn't say we need to simplify it, so I think we're good. Okay, I'm going to find my brush and I'm going to look over the different default brushes. I'm going to find one that's fuzzy and I'm going to move the opacity down and do a pretty big size. Okay, and then we'll just start at the corner. And it's very subtle because we don't want it to be super dramatic. This first time through, we're just, we're not even worried about this line yet. We're just going to be lightening up these edges. And then up here at the top. Okay, now we can take down the size and lower, higher the opacity all the way up and not lower the size too much. Because it's still where it's got the fuzziness. It's not going to be a super hard, it's going to be somewhat gradual, but we're going to just take this up where the line is and that blends it in. And you can even decide how much around you want to do. And again, at this point, I like to lower the opacity again, do it kind of big, and just kind of work it around so that, so it just gives a little bit of a, I don't know, almost like a cloudy look of sorts as we've added this in. But we're still able to see all of the main people in the photo that we want to see. Okay, then from here, um, you can just go ahead and scrap it like normal. You can slide on. And this I need to make the 300 PPI, but... Um, So we need to resize it. This one, I'm not going to change the size itself. I'm only going to change the resolution. And that does change these, but in fact, I'm going to even come down a little bit on them so that now when I slide it on, it's a little bit bigger. And I, this was a picture that I saved off Facebook. I've lost the original. So it's not going to be the best quality, but I figure at this point it's better than nothing. And then I'm going to just scrap and use the other elements in the kit to scrap my layout using this in the background. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was helpful. There are so many different things you can try with these different modes. Um, it's a lot of fun to try you know, there, this gives it a softer look. And so, oops. So go ahead and experiment, give it a try, and let me know what you think. And you can find other tutorials and free products to scrap with at on my website at thedigicrafter.com.